nomads open moments when we can openly share to other nomads our experiences of how you love us and even them. Keep us all safe. Amen. I want to introduce you to something you've probably never done in church before. Have you ever looked at your Facebook page in church? Put your hand up if you have. You're looking guilty? Well, here's your chance. Open up Facebook now. And where the magnifying glass is, type in SDA Grey Nomads Australia. SDA Grey Nomads Australia. And please answer the questions because that's one of Facebook's rules when you have a group, a closed group like this one is. Please answer the questions and send a submit and you can become a member of SEA Grey Nomads. I'm the guy who writes all the notes for the meetings and I post them soon after the benediction each meeting for anyone who is a member to enjoy the sermon. I've had a few people around Australia say to me, thank you for them, they've helped me create a sermon. <laughs> Not that I've created it, but someone else has enabled them to get a sermon ready for their church. Many of you notice that I walk around on poles. Can I tell you why? It was a miracle. Whew, I didn't think this would happen. <laughs> but back in 2018, and I was, well, Lynn and I were on the shores of Lake um, Yarrawonga um, Mawala in New South Wales, just across the border from Victoria, and our four children, our four grandkids and their parents were on the Victorian bike ride. They stopped by and had morning tea with us. And I said, because I'm a, an old bike rider, I trained to go to the Tour de France back in 2010 and didn't make it because I got many years disease, which mucks up your balance and it's not good for riding bikes. I still got to the Tour. But um, they came and we rode off together back uh, onto Yarrawonga. Five k's down the road, I said to young Caleb, the 14-year-old grandson, you take the lead. So I let him through. And he was getting away from me. And I thought, that's not good. Granddad behind the grandson getting taken away. <laughs> so I'm catching up. I, I've got to catch up. I've got to get there. And I was on a gravel bike rather than a road bike. He was on a road bike. And, and um, I got right to where I could see his cogs. I can still see them now. It's the last thing I saw before I woke up 30 hours later in Melbourne. A car ran across in front of us and Kayla braked his bike and I ran up his chuffer, as I say. And um, apparently, as they were putting me into the ambulance, the doctor of the Victorian bike ride said he'll wake up in a month and he may get out of bed two months later. <clears throat> I woke up 30 hours later, as I said, with four white coats leaning over me, trying to work out whether they'll take me to theatre and drill a hole in my head to release the pressure because my Glaxo level was 14 out of 15. At 15, you get your head bored into. You're not going to believe this, but four days later, I walked out of hospital. I had a broken collarbone, which wouldn't knit, I had a, um, four ribs and lung, uh, lung punctures and a broken brain. Have you ever had a broken brain? You're laughing. I'm confused. I've been confused. When they did the MRI on my brain, I, out of the four parts, three of them were damaged. Two years later, they did another MRI, MRI and they were all healed. You know the brain heals itself? I do. When we were having troubles with the collarbone knitting, I decided to go for a, a second opinion. And as I walked into the, the surgeon's office, before I even sat down, he said, you've got a broken collarbone, I've got you down for Tuesday, is that okay? I sat down, I said, yep. 
and then I walked out. It was that pretty quick. It wouldn't knit. So, well, it started to knit, that's right. And I went back to the original hospital and for the normal checkup, and they said, something's happened. And I said, yeah, I, I found a doctor who cared. <laughs> Why are you laughing? You know, that doctor at the first hospital, when I asked for an apology, sorry doctors, this is what he said. He said, doctors on the north side of the river would plate it straight away. Those of us on the south side of the river, meaning the Yarra River, don't. What a reason to give me. That was good information for when the court case came up. But anyway, we won. And we've started to heal, but the part of the brain that cannot be checked out by an MRI is the balance. And that's what my problem is. I'm learning to live with being slightly out of balance all the time. It's hard for my wife. She's been such a power of strength. And I just want to adore her even more than what she thinks I do. <laughs> but thank you so much, Lynn. I've had such a support of a lot of people. I've never had a visit from a church pastor, would you believe, in all that time. I've had 220 waiting rooms, 34 x-rays, 6 MRIs, 7 CAT scans, 5 physiotherapists, 6 exercise physiologists, 5 hand therapists, because my hand went bung as well, 2 um, GPs and uh, a, would you believe I needed this person? A neuropsychologist. <laughs> well, he was, he was the great, he was the saviour. And lots and lots of prayers that I don't know about. But there's a lot of people in this world who have hidden injuries. And I found out because I joined a group called Brain Injury Matters. And every Monday we have coffee together at 11 o'clock on Zoom. And those 25 people just in Melbourne, they have interesting stories and they've all got hidden injuries. For every person that dies on the road, there's another 10 people with extended injury rehabs to go through. And four of them are brain injuries. Thank you, God. You've given us a great body and a great land to live in. I want to introduce to you a, a Spanish friend of mine. I hardly know the guy. But he's taught, he talks Spanish, but I am Spanish. My surname is Spain, so I have to know more. <laughs> I speak fluent Spanish all the time. <laughs> Buenos dias, come forward, Harold. Oh, he's wanting to keep quiet. <laughs> How unusual. You're going to see that he's a different person to being quietness. Thank you for coming. Oh, buenos dias. Buenos dias. What a story. Can we give this guy a hand? <laughs> wow. And thank you for sharing your story, your testimony, and, and, and you know, that, that's remarkable. I, I don't think there's a whole lot I can share after that. That's beautiful. And his wife. What a story. Thank you. And I'm so sorry that you didn't get a single pastoral visit. I'm sorry you didn't get a single pastoral visit. That's messed up. Can I just acknowledge that? And, you know, as a, as a pastor, can I acknowledge that it's messed up that he didn't get a... P I'm a stop. I'm just, I'm a stop. So, welcome everybody. Good morning.